Hi there, my name is Amy Murphy and I'm here at my studio Yoga Grow in Fredericton. And this video is a handstand prep. It's based on a workshop that I just taught. It uh, passes you through all of your main uh, main body joints mobilizes your ankles, your knees, your hips, your a little bit of your torso, your shoulders, and then your wrists. So that's what you start with. And then I'll show you a couple of just uh, ways to strengthen the required body parts to, to get you into a handstand. So you'll do a little bit of handstand within this, but it's largely a handstand prep. So step one is to stretch out your ankles. Um, come down into a kneeling position. And you'll start with the right leg, step your right foot onto your mat, onto the floor. Uh, you can't quite see from this angle, but do uh, manually lift and pull your right heel back as far as it'll go, um, so long as the heel is grounded on the mat, but do have your ankle behind the knee, knee ahead of the ankle, a nice, uh, nice deep bend. Once your heel is planted down, you can lift your guts up, turn yourself to your right a little bit, so you're facing your, your lifted bent leg. Lay yourself up and over it. And then your first hold is to, to hug your leg. So the weight of your chest and your arms uh, is crushing down on this right ankle on purpose. You can breathe against this right thigh and just lay your weight against the, the, the thigh, the shin. Hang out. We'll keep the same shape, keep that right heel attached to the floor. Then you can walk your arms out, sort of like you would for a child's pose. That just spreads your weight out slightly differently. Then phase three is to allow this right heel to hike up and walk your hands forwards. Put a whole lot of weight into that ankle. Slide your hands in, come back onto that right heel, and then switch sides. Uh, if you do this whole video and if you get very uh, used to this flow, this pattern of stretching your body, definitely hold things longer than what I'm showing you. Just take your time. Haul your heel in, this left heel now behind the knee. Lift your guts up, pull your whole body weight over this bent leg. And phase one is to, to hug the leg. You hang on to it so that your arms are part of the weight that is pressing down onto this left leg. You hang out, you breathe, lengthen your arms, same cue as the other side, it's kind of like child's coat, so it just redistributes maybe a little bit more weight into this bent knee. And then finally allow that right, or left heel, sorry, to lift lean the body forward. You have a better view of this side of my body so you can see the heels detached. You just get this new slope of your shin bone. It'll tra travel the stretch possibly up to a different place. You're stretching your soleness when you're doing this. Slide hands back in, sit the heel back down. Now you come onto your feet, come to the top of your mat. So that was your ankles. To get your knees, you do a few pumps of flat back pose. So feet at your hip width or a bit more narrow. You bend your legs just to standing forward folds. Same thing, this could be held longer if you need more time. Slide hands up your shin bones, come into flat back. Have the heels of your hands just beneath your knees. Pull your shoulders back, get a little bit of breath, a little bit of posture going here. Your belly lifts from the floor. Eyes stay down, shoulders pry back. Now lift your heels. You can keep the hands in place. I'll probably put mine directly over my knee pads. And then get a deep leg bend. Expect a bit of a knee crack. The deep range of motion, you can do it. Your knees go forward. You get a foot stretch depending on where your body is tight. You can press your knees down and lift your chest up. But you're gonna bob the body just like that. Keep the hands largely in place. Slowly bring yourself back down into your heels. You'll just automatically go into your flat back shape. And then keep doing that. Think of it as a, a real stimulation for your knee joints. Not the most attractive term, but you're, you're juicing, you're oiling your knees when you do this. So just keep doing that. Standing forward, folds. 
Simply roll yourself up into your mountain pose. You open your hands, you open your hips. Uh, that last uh, knee bob thing did get your hips, but we'll officially get the hips moving just with some simple squats. So be, be okay with a wide stance. Your feet, you're uh, more than your hip width and your toes a little bit turned out. You make decisions about that at home. Wardrobe adjustment. And then just stick your hands forward to give yourself a counterbalance. The first one can be a little, little ugly, a little messy. Wiggle yourself into your squat. Chest up, shoulders down. Uh, some imagination, some forces that can help you is imagining that you're pushing down on thick air, almost fanning the heat of the room with heavy hands. That'll give you a little lat turn on. Suck your shoulders back, chest open. And then move from really your whole body, but definitely use your hamstrings, your heels to bring yourself back up. The arms go beside you. And then let it be intuitive from here. Do some squats. Sit down, open chest, squeeze the body to come back up. Do a few of those. going and then come up to standing walk your feet back together for your torso your torso chest ribs um, I'll do some standing side bend stuff be sure to engage in greater breath more yoga breath now that you're uh, sliding your energy up your torso Catch hold, uh, your arms go over your head, catch hold of your left wrist, push down into your left foot, and then really pull your whole left body straight up initially. Then haul it up and over to your right, a side bend. And then the breathing that I had mentioned really happens in your rib cage. You're trying to stretch yourself from the inside out, so allow for lots of rib spacing to happen with each breath, especially on that left side, the part that'll probably have more sensation right now. Your legs stay firm. You've got a firm footprint to weight in the toes, weight in the heels, and a lift in your arch. You try to keep those hips square so your butt is very much cupped underneath your, your spine. Your hip creases are open like they might be for an up dog. Tilt your chin down, look down the right side of the mat, and then we'll add a floss, add a barrel roll of the ribs to this side bend. Look down, pull your left armpit towards the floor. You might not go very far. And then make decisions on your own when you come back up. We're still coming back up into a side bend. Your chest opens towards the front of the room. Maybe it leans up towards the ceiling. So you're just getting the, the counter twist to what you just did. Suck your guts in and up. Pull your front rib cage down towards your hips as you pull your left armpit and elbow towards the floor and then open the chest either to your neutral side bend or up into a twisted version. Do a few of those flosses. Should feel good, but challenging to get uh, the, the dust, the blood moving in that part of your body. And then stand back up, push hard into both feet, haul yourself up by the wrist, and give the arms just a, a bit of a swing. And switch sides. You can do a nice mountain pose, reach into the gloves of the hands, butt cups underneath you so your hips are open in the front. Keep your rib cage pinned down as you reach your arms up. Then it's the right wrist that you grab. You can bias some weight into your heavy right foot, pull your right arm up, come up and over to your left. Breathe into both sides of the ribs, but you can bias breath into the right rib cage. Just your side bend right now. Still had evenly weighted feet. Now that you are side bent, kneecaps up, all of that good stuff. Keep the bend, direct your eyes down so your neck will change a little bit to begin the flow of the floss. You might perk your elbow up and then start to cup your armpit down. You'll feel tissue cape over the back of your right side body, a bit of a lat pull. Open your chest up. It goes to your side bend, and maybe there's an end, then some, maybe there's a twist up to the ceiling. Floss like this, now that you're familiar. Down and up, still managing your side bend, still aware of your feet, your lifted kneecaps. And then pull yourself back up through center. We'll keep the arms over the head this time. And then just a straight up arm line stretch. Interlace your fingers, push your palms up. The skin of the hands will stretch. The elbows will stretch and do a few uh, just 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, bucket handle stretches here. So let the whole hoop of the arms go forward. Do crush your front rib cage down. Go in and out of that. Active breath, a good hard exhale can really ground the front of the ribs down and make more space when the hands are forward. A breath in rises you up. Release the arms from that and give them a shake out. And then we begin to accumulate strength and shape and some body lessons as we come into a narrow legged child's pose. So everything that we had just done was more mobility. This is a little bit more strength. So come down with the knees taut together. Before you even come into child's pose, you can put your thumbs into the, the creases of your hips. Use the remaining four fingers to, to tug the, the skin of your body, the wrinkles of your pants, wide to the right and the left, and also down to the floor. So keep that pin in mind. Uh, at home, just keep holding onto the thighs. But that is the energetic wrap of your strong glutes, your, your strong side butt that'll keep your thighs in good shape. It'll keep you from losing the, the strength and heat of the body if you know how to, how to do this, how to, how to smile the hip creases and weight your butt. So it's everything wide and down, wide and down, wide and down. <laughs> Come into your child's pose. You have to suck your guts up to let your arms go straight forward. Think of your hands pulling. Your guts lifting, the sides of your hips spreading and strengthening, pinning down to the floor. Keep thinking of the word pull as you take yourself into your first cat pose. It's good if your hands are a little bit sloped forward for our particular purposes right now. In this shape, memorize the feeling of your front rib cage down, your guts very sucked up, and even this definition in your middle back, this is a good shape to have not so exaggerated, but a version of this does happen in your handstand. So your rib cage is down, your guts are up, your middle back is spread. You don't want narrow shoulder blades. Lay your hips towards your wrists. This is a passive hip mobility, so it's just a grounded up dog. You keep the knees down. The fronts of the hips are smiling, so to speak, and then you can work on your first tricep wrap. So this is strength too. Stay in grounded up dog with the knees down. Now dig the elbows out. So you'll feel your shoulders crash in. In this position, you're more bicep, more pec dominant, but you want to get into the detailed muscles of the body as best you can. So that takes a tricep rep. Let your elbows now turn their way back behind you. Re-straighten the arms. Hopefully you get a shake in the body when that happens. You want the backs of the arms fired up so that it's not all bicep and chest. Tuck your chin. Slam the hands into the floor, squeeze the backs of those arms for cat, child's pose. And then with both strength and softness, you go from end to end. Muscular cat, open shoulders and hips as you passive or grounded up dog will be the term. Tuck the chin and throw, push the cat. Keep pushing as you go back to your child's pose. Hold. Keep pulling to your up dog. And then last one, tuck chin, push through your muscular cat shape. Memorize those strong armpits and wide back. Lay the body to child's pose and then tuck and go to your first downward dog. In your downward dog, the wide side body strength um, is still happening. Your butt still feels wide. And the direction of the, those imaginary hip pins is just more towards the wall behind you. You're spinning the upper outer hips wide and backwards. And then I did it without even cueing. I started to bend my arms. So I will, and you will repeat the tricep wrap here. Elbows beneath you. And then right now my rib cage is not on and strong. So if you could look at me for a moment. The difference between hanging into your shoulders and not so much hanging into your shoulders comes from some integrity in the, uh, this place just below your chest. So as I pull my front rib cage down, there's my mini cat pose that I was referring to in my middle back. So more definition happens up here and less, it's just less of a jointy experience. So this is jointy. This is not so jointy. Have your fingers spread, pump your back up. 
to look at your hands. We'll use wide steps to find the side of our butt yet again. We're wide stepping into a squat pose. Then bring your right knee out to the right. It's a bit of an oblique squeeze to come forward. See that my left toes are lifted. Step that right foot wide. And then the other foot doesn't get quite as nice of a travel, but your left knee moves to the left. And then you sit that heel down. Bring your hands into your heart. Find a prayer squat. And then your exit is not so fancy. Just step into a down dog. We'll do repeats of that together. Let your left foot hover. Look at your hands. It's now your left foot that widens out. You travel low. You squeeze the side of your body. You even squeeze this left tricep and butt. Step your foot. And then slowly slide in with the other side. Quiet footsteps. Pull, pull your butt under you. There's cat pose in both the tailbone and your middle back, even in this Malasana, the squat pose. Hands down, just right back to down dog. You're still um, investigating the body strength here. You're conditioning things here. Claw the hands, look at the hands. Right knee again, wide, quiet step. Left foot follows through, lift guts, quiet footstep, prayer hands. Couple more, down dog. Left side, look at the hands, drag the left knee to the armpit, lift your guts to get a quiet footstep. Follow it through with the other side. Sit, elbows down, downward dog. Look at your hands, pull your right knee wide, lift and step your right foot to the outside of the hand. Same thing on the other side. Sit butt down, bring hands into heart, guts up. Down dog. And last time, pull the left knee wide and left, hike the guts up, step that foot wide. Right foot quietly follows through. Scoop the hips under you, bring hands into heart. And then you'll begin to learn the, the slow pace of the body, the slow strength that can happen as you do this with a bit of a hop. I'll again wrap my triceps, elbows kick out, wrap the arms under you in a more efficient way, and actually shorten your downward dog by a step or two. Look at your hands, be bold about the spring of the legs, you'll dip the hips down, get some air, and then quiet yourself into your squat pose. And then do that to your best ability over and over again. Down dog. The slowness, it's not going to be as pretty every time. The slowness does come from a, a very uh, apprehensive gut, pubic bone and tailbone sort of trying to catch up with one another, tag one another. Short down dog, look at fingers, bend legs, and just try to get some air time. Keep going. And just step back, nothing fancy. And you try and improve each time. Sometimes it looks a little bit more of like a forward jump than an upward jump. That's cool too. Good little body heater. Good. Do that as much as you'd like at home. I'll cue uh, two or three different ways to do a split leg handstand. From downward dog, stretch your right leg high and allow your hip crease to open your knee to bend. You're entering from a crescent lunge pose. Here, even naturally, I do wrap my triceps again. Lift your left heel to the leg that you're standing on. When you close your right hip, work on side butt strength. Work on cuppy armpits, strong lats. Follow your knee abruptly into your nose. See how much my left heel lifts. So you're building heat and strength. You might hover here for a little while. Nice cobra hood, nice cat shape in my back. Look at your hands as quietly as you can get away with. Step your right foot. For me, I'll shorten my stance just a tiny bit. Bend the back knee, which is your left knee. Dangle your arms and slowly roll the body up. Keep the back knee down for a moment as you open your hands, reach into your hands, circle your arms up, and now fill in that left hamstring. Kick out through the back heel, your crescent lunge, 
Walk into your right toes. Allow the body to be long and strong. Even here, I do another tricep wrap. Let your palms face the front of the room, kind of like a high five motion. You will bend the back knee again as you push your hands forward and make cat pose happen in this standing formation here. Guts in and up, rib cage down hard. Now you basically tip this shape over like you're a tipping teapot. Let your spread hands go down towards the floor. They're coming down to frame up or almost frame up this right foot. As your hands arrive on the floor, let your, low, your middle back rise up. Look directly at your right foot. The back knee can straighten now. Take one foot step back so you can now just see your mat. I have my right heel lifted. If you need to, you can practice a few little gas pedal pumps here. The left leg rising and falling with pointed toes. The hips practicing a good, square, manageable shape. And you can take a few tries at your split leg handstand. Eyes between the hands or maybe slightly ahead of them. And that's a good place to practice from. I'll cue the other side, down dog. Tricep wrap. Left leg rises, hip crease opens, knee bends. Left armpit stays cupped down, right heel hikes up. Close your hip. Take, uh, take some time, take a moment as you pull your knee into your nose. Be bold about the rise of the right heel. Guts up, you're practicing. Step your left foot quietly. Back knee bends, arms dangle as you roll up. This roll up is significant to slowly cue up your guts, to stack the spine, to wake up all the little muscles surrounding the spine. When your hands hit the air, just thoughtfully let that right hamstring, back hamstring hike up. Right heel pushes back. Tricep wrap if you need it. Crescent lunge. Palms face the front of the room. Like you're pushing a wall, a door away, the hands go forward, but you're also being punched in the gut. Your rib cage goes down even further. I bent my back knee. Squeeze belly in, start to pull your hands down towards the mat. They frame up or almost frame up this front foot, this left one. And that's where you look at your foot. Your back gets big and lifted, your hands are clawed. Take a step back with this front foot, this left one, so you can see just the plain mat. And then attempt your split leg handstand. Just like the squat stuff, see if there's air time to be had, and just play. From here, come into a standing forward fold. I'll just use the middle of my mat. Flat back. Lift your heels, wrap your triceps back, chest forward. Just test out your crow pose, keep stabilizing the body. Should have a pretty confident crow if you're handstand practicing. So from here, I bent my knees so that my hands come down. I do clutter myself, my torso is on my legs. So things are tight, small. Heels are up a lot, eyes are forward. As I lean forward, my knees will attach to my armpits. So your, ar your legs are directly on your arms. As the toes tighten up, you will lean forward. The feet will eventually lift up. Squeeze the backs of the legs, claw the arms. Try to straighten the elbows out. A little crow practice. You can enter a split leg handstand from a flat back as well. It's a little bit taller. It's a little bit more threatening, which is a good thing. It might freak you out a little bit. So come into flat back, hands on the shins, and then lift your heels. Then from here, bend the knees enough so that your hands can land. Your guts go up as your hands go down. Same thing as the, the lunge shape, just so you're a little bit higher up, a little bit more gutsy. Let one leg straighten back, be light, on, light and delicate on those toes, and then just test it out from here. See what you can get. You can do that on both legs. And beyond that, do always some wrist stretching so you can flip your hands around in a very simple way. Spread the fingers out, sit onto your heels.
eventually pull the palms off of the floor, but keep the fingers down, the thumbs can release. They can stay sticking out or you can circle your thumbs. Give the arms a good shake. Then your quick version of your wrist stretch uh, just from here is to push the walls away. So bring your arms up to a T, spread the fingers. Your wrists are bent, of course. You can hold like this or you can floss. Letting the fingers go to the ceiling and then to your neutral wrist. To get the top of the forearm, more of those extensors, tuck your thumbs in, let your fingers wrap around that tight thumb, that fist. Point all of your knuckles down. That alone is a pretty great stretch. So long as there's nothing upset in the shoulder or the rotator cuff or any of the, the shoulder jointy stuff, you can practice a, a little empty can test let the, the, the hands just sort of spill down towards the floor. The whole arm line is going to roll. So just, if it feels good, do it as sort of your, your rule. You can roll these tendons around. Or much like the other surface of the wrist, you could just bend and straighten the, the wrist itself with the thumbs tucked in. Shake it out. Open your chest. Have fun. That's very good prep work for you. I hope that you like it.